Hello, I'm Arthur Black. Welcome to Weird Homes, a show that looks at the most unusual and bizarre homes in North America. Now, call me a snoop, but I love checking out other people's backyards. And the weirder the yard, the snoopier I get. Our first stop is a backyard that's been turning heads, literally. It's decorated with dozens and dozens of baby doll heads. Never mind your crows, this yard scares humans. Then there's Rancho Shazam with its aluminum palm trees and a can opener big enough for Paul Bunyan. And for our final destination, we're gonna bushwhack into a converted water tower where the kids can climb trees inside the house. These are homeowners who've gone out of their way to go against the grain. Some gardeners raise heads of lettuce or cabbage. Scott Stevens just raises heads. Now Lee Greenberg, he likes to raise flags, very large flags. While Grant Cruz lives up in the trees. All these weird homeowners pursue lifestyles that go a little against the grain. Welcome to Scott Stevens Place, a comfy bungalow in a quiet neighborhood in Austin, Texas. Nothing weird about this house from the front. Wait till you get a load of what's out back. <laughs> doll heads, doll legs, doll torsos. What is this, House of Frankenstein? Nah, it's House of Scott Stevens, a quiet, friendly, unassuming guy who just doesn't happen to decorate like Martha Stewart. Now, this is my pride and joy. This is the baby doll cage right here. You know, this one's never going to get away from you. There she is. There she is. Now, all these things recycle. Think of all the stuff that people throw away. Think of all the things you can make out of them. So all these are all my old toothbrushes. Here's the old coffee lid that I found. A vegetable garden. I've got my baby doll body fence to protect it. Try to keep the, the big predators away. Those aren't scare crows, those are scare humans. And you might wonder where all these baby dolls came from. Well, I put the heads on sticks over here, and you gotta do something with the bodies. You can't just throw them away. Scott has trouble throwing just about anything away. When he moved into this place, he planted four skinny yucca plants outside the back door. That was seven years ago. Today, Scott's got himself a cactus jungle. Mind you, it's a cactus jungle with that special Scott Stevens touch. I had one or two baby doll heads, and I don't know why I put them out there. I just did it for the fun of it, and I got an extreme reaction to some folks. I thought, well, if I'll get this much reaction from one or two baby doll heads, well, how about 10, 20, 30, 40, 100? I've got about 140 baby doll heads up right now. Plus, I've got mannequin heads. I'm real lucky. I lucked into some of these just last week. Every once in a while, you gotta straighten them up. Eventually, I like to have a full mannequin set in here like there's a family that's moving around. Jilly. Scott's pretty good at scrounging for new garden art, but he's also got friends who help out with donations. Wonderful. This is exactly what I need. I've got a place just to put these in. Notice also the crutches. This is a special one. I think for crutches. People have given me crutches, and I found crutches, and I just add them on in. And that's become one of the major items in the garden besides the cactus and the baby doll heads. You don't go to many people's backyards and see a bunch of baby doll heads on sticks and cactus and, and crutches, so. You're right, Scott. There's a real shortage of gardens that feature headless bodies, bodiless heads, glass bottle borders, abandoned crutches. Scott, have you got any idea how many things you've got back here? I don't have exact count on everything here because I'm not trying to quantify an aesthetic experience. You know, you come in, sit down, and enjoy yourself, and it's been like a non-going, mutating jam because there's not any real plan to it. For a long time, only the next-door neighbors had any idea what Scott was up to. Then, an Austin newspaper reporter stumbled onto the scene. About a year and a half ago, there was an article about me in the local newspaper that's how I started getting some of these heads and things would just show up at my desk. There'll be like a box and open up, and there'll be a skull in it. So every once in a while, I'll come home, and I'll find stuff that people have dropped off for me, like these heads. And just sitting there at my front door, and I thought, well, this is great. Someone really must like me. Scott works in the biotech industry as a production controller and planner. He spends his work days staring at a computer. But when the whistle blows, Scott makes a beeline straight to his beloved backyard. 
it's very good to get your feet in the dirt and get your hands dirty after just being nothing but a paper shuffler and a computer keyboard tapper all day. This is real life. Everybody talks about gardening being good therapy, and it certainly is true. This is the first thing I did after I feed my cat and do my calisthenics is I come back here and check on the plants, put something in the ground, trim something up, and it's fun. It's relaxing. It may be relaxing for Scott. What about the neighbors? Are they cool with the idea of a forest of doll heads right next door? You may be aware of something that a lot of them face off in this direction. And that's because I had a new neighbor starting about two years ago. But all I knew is that I wanted to have the top hand in this situation. So before the new neighbor came in, I had all the baby doll heads facing directly towards her back door, because I figured I'm going to have a first impression that's going to be lasting. Every once in a while, I look up, and all of a sudden, there's this lady out there. She's like looking at me and looking at me and looking at me. And hi, how are you doing? I'm your new neighbor. I'm Scott. Oh, hi. Do you have seances out there? I said, not yet. It's a good idea. So I keep thinking I'm going to go ahead and do that. I was a nurse, OK? So I, I saw those heads on sticks, and I wondered where the rest of the bodies were. <laughs> So I decided instead of fussing, I would spend my beer money for the next six months on this fence. But I'm going to have a peephole so I can check on those bodies now and then, you know. Scott makes art inside his bungalow as well. And given his taste in decor, you won't be surprised to learn the identity of one of his favorite idols. I think uh, Alice Cooper has uh, influenced the way I put in my garden with all the baby doll heads and crutches, et cetera. It's just a continuation of my own general vision. I, I want to have fun. You know, I, I don't want to be in an uptight place where I'm worried about how people are going to see me. I'm living here, not anybody else's. You know, I'm going to have a good time. That's why I have what I want to play with when I want to play with it. Pretty hard to come up with a definition for Scott's unique decorating theme. He calls it surrealism with a hillbilly twist. Lots of folks think it's silly. Well, Scott's comfortable with that, too. You know, there's a lot of absurdity in this world, and a lot of it's really sad. And I don't think there's any sadness here. I think this is really funny, and it's really goofy. And you know, you should have some fun in life. And it's such a, a trip out of the mainstream of, of American life. You see people on television that, uh, agitated because her yard isn't perfect. Everything is on that perfect green carpet. I'd hate if I had a perfect green carpet in my yard. You know, th this is my own sanctuary right here. just north of San Francisco will take you through some curious California countryside. And one of the most bizarre roadside attractions is Rancho Shazam, the home of Lee Greenberg. Lee's had a few zoning squabbles over Rancho Shazam. That's because Lee likes to do things his way. He came here after he tired of living on a houseboat in Sausalito. I got interested in sandblasting at that time, but because it was a residential community, uh, I didn't feel comfortable starting my equipment, my compressor, until 9 o'clock in the morning. So I started to look around for land, and I found this property, and it interested me immediately. Over there, I, it had the energy of the freeway and the convenience of the freeway. And in this direction, it, it seemed like the Mediterranean. It was very placid. So I, I liked the uh, schizophrenia of it, the way everything came together. As soon as Lee hit the ground at Rancho Shazam, he started to expand. He built more living spaces and workshops. He built art studios. He built whatever he felt like. There's an informal theme at 14. It's the... Um, the Wizard of Oz theme. And this is uh, 18, my second building. And this has an Alice in Wonderland theme, informally. Uh, these rocks are kind of interesting. They were made by one of my resident uh, artists. And if you can believe it, all of the, these are uh, foam-filled rocks. 
Lee decided that the no man's land between his property and the freeway needed work, so he turned wasteland into public gardens. This is the Rancho Shazam Public Gardens. I did most of this uh, landscaping, did receive some plant donations, and these are mostly uh, cactuses, uh, grasses, and succulents. This is beautiful Lake Shazam. It's an old redwood tub, and it's got fish in it. There isn't much that Lee can't turn into a work of art, be it a decommissioned bomb or a resurrected water boy. Partly what I'm trying to do is, in general, uh, conserve and uh, recycle, and also preserve a bit of Marin County history. So this used to be the base of a crane down in Sausalito. And I said, oh, perfect, a water wheel. So I mounted it vertically. And uh, now we pump water and light it at night. Throws a dramatic shadow on the building. Uh, this spiral uh, slide came from a local uh, Air, Air Force base. I had to sign a paper saying that I wouldn't eat the paint off of it because it could be lead-based. And so far, I've been able to live within that requirement. Lee likes life on the large side. Everything from outsized wrenches to giant fried eggs. Rust-resistant palm trees. They're made of aluminum. A tennis racket built for King Kong. And this is uh, for the big game. Giant uh, can opener. And a sardine can opener mounted on the outside wall. Just in case he ever wants to hold an open house. And then there are the flags. Lee is nothing if not patriotic. He salvaged these two giant banners off an out-of-service aircraft carrier. Not surprisingly, Rancho Shazam has come to the attention of local zoning authorities. Well, the worst about living here is that uh, this property is subject to a lot of regulation, what with the creek and the marsh. So you have to get a lot of um, permission to do anything. And it's not just the local bylaw officers. Lee has a firefight going with the U.S. Post Office as well. This is Rancho Shazam, like the White House or like uh, Hearst Castle. And I'm trying to train the post office, so sometimes I just put Rancho Shazam as my return address or even send letters to myself at Rancho Shazam, try to educate them. <laughs> They're resistant. <laughs> he may have trying times dealing with various government bureaucracies, but as far as his fellow artists and tenants are concerned, Lee is a working class hero. It's great, I love living here. And I have three little nieces. They think this is just like Disneyland. And it is. When it's nice weather, I slide down the slide every day. Contrary to what the authorities may think, Lee likes things neat and tidy. He even cleans up his section of the freeway. But being Lee, he naturally does it his way. I get into a little costume. It's a bit of a convict costume. I call it the Lucky Drive Chain Gang. And I have a, a ball and chain, and I go out there, and pick up the litter that, that appears magically, <laughs> hourly. That's an unending task. It's quite the little kingdom Lee Greenberg's carved out for himself. He even has his own flotilla under his command. He calls it Lee's Navy. Lee likes to think that even his adversaries have a newfound respect for him. Well, I used to be uh, seen as strange, but now that uh, I've accumulated some property, I prefer to be seen as eccentric. I like uh, whimsy like uh, to take a comic view of uh, life and materials and art and architecture. Be a little silly, play with it. Anybody that builds a building like this wants to, is open to meeting people, is not a real private person. Far be it from us to label Lee Greenberg a swinger, but he's definitely gregarious. Unless you're here to talk about some imagined zoning violation.
used to be unfenced rainforest at Cowichan Bay on Vancouver Island. Now the big box subdivisions are marching in, but there are a few holdouts still going against the grain. Hey, as you can see, civilization is encroaching on all sides of me. Come on to my house. I'll show you something different. You're about to see something different, all right. As a matter of fact, you're in for a bit of time travel. That's because Grant Cruz is taking us back to simpler days and simpler ways. Grant found this forest retreat more than 20 years ago, but it didn't look much like a homestead back then. All there was was an abandoned water tower surrounded by trees. When I first came here about 20 years ago, this uh, water tower was very ramshackle, ready to fall down. And I uh, reinforced it and totally rebuilt it, actually. Grant's a carpenter and an avid recycler. He put those talents together to turn a broken down water tower into a fantasy forest retreat. I had a, a mountain of windows and doors, all recycled stuff, a little pile of stuff that I was waiting to find some use for, and this was the perfect thing for it. Even though it's three stories high, Grant's home only adds up to about a thousand square feet. Grant's fine with that. He follows the philosophy of the 19th century writer environmentalist Henry David Thoreau. Every time I get near the woods, I start thinking about what he had to say about it. And simplify was the key words that he, you know, the key thing he talked about was simplification and living in a small space and not requiring that much of anything. And so uh, I felt I should do that too. How's it going there, kids? And how is Grant's quiet retreat for kids? Well, he's a single dad raising three children here in his refurbished water tower. And for Zeke, Polly, and Gideon, it's like living in a tree fort clubhouse. It's very special living here because we can actually open several windows here and just reach out and, and touch a tree right there, like a big old tree. And I, I think that this is um, what we've tried to do in this house, is, is to bring nature inside to remove the barriers between the inside and the outside. Yeah, I'd say Grant pulled that off all right. Check the spiral staircase in the living room. But a thousand square feet of floor space shared by four people doesn't leave anybody a lot of room. So Grant put on his tool belt and threw up a few more forest dwellings next to the water tower. This is Holly's playhouse here. First, we had just a platform built there. And the kids played on that platform a lot. But eventually, I scrounged enough materials to you know, make a very elaborate house here. This window here is actually a toilet, toilet seat that my dad built. By the time we were finished, Zeke started feeling kind of left out. We built this woodworking shop and toy storage area. When I was a kid, I wanted to build buildings just like this. And I didn't have the skills, I didn't have the tools or the materials. So I, th I felt I could still think like a kid by building this and with kids around to advise me, they're quite happy with the way it turned out. What kids wouldn't be happy with a frontier playground like this? Not that Grant's work is done yet. Well, with Zeke and Holly both having houses, I had three kids, so Gideon wanted something. And we had the back part of this, structure was our clothesline stand. And I kept telling Gideon, I'll turn it into a pirate ship for you. There's a crow's nest up there. There's a wall tent, which becomes so-called sail. He thinks it's a pirate ship, so I wouldn't argue with him. For Grant, this woodland homestead has been a learning experience. And not just in carpentry in parenting as well. The water tower has made it possible to raise my kids the way I've wanted to. I don't want to live in a normal house with my family, and I don't think they want to either. This place has been like a playhouse to them and to me. I'm totally happy to do these things, and my kids certainly benefit from all that. And the kids? Well, they don't get to hang out in the mall or go to the movies as much as their friends in town, but they hardly seem deprived. Ask Holly what she thinks her friends are missing. They're missing out a lot of fun. They're missing out 
watching birds, they're missing out climbing trees, missing out building forts. I'd rather be in the outback where there's so much places to explore. For Grant Cruz and the kids, it's living in paradise. But the real world, alas, isn't far away. The land Grant's home of 20 years stands on is up for sale. Grant's afraid new owners would do what other developers have done nearby, clear cut the land and chop it into lots. And pretty soon the world would have a whole bunch more of those big box houses that Grant doesn't like. What we see here is trees, but just beyond is housing. 20 years ago, there was no houses here at all. There was only Woods and me. If a uh, third party buys it, I fully believe that the trees would all come down and they'd be marketed, that uh, my house would have to come down and it would end up being a yuppie subdivision. If I have to, to leave, I would think that I, I'd probably dismantle this thing and try to take it with me. I don't know whether that's going to be a fight or not, but it's okay. Well, Grant, here's hoping you're being a pessimist. And here's hoping you and the kids are still up in your water tower the next time we drop by. So long to you, Scott Stevens, still turning heads in Austin, Texas. And Lee Greenberg, dragging his ball and chain down US Highway 101. And Grant Cruz, going against the urban grain, way back in the bush. Thank heavens for against the grainers like Scott, Lee, and Grant. Otherwise, what would we call this show? Bland Homes? I'm Arthur Black. Hope you enjoyed Weird Homes. Till next time.